A very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. Touchline is the show this particular afternoon. Maxwell Wasika is my name. Of course, Ken Andrew, the guest co-host, still with, here with us. Joining us is Ngarwa Kamuya, not an unfamiliar face to this particular platform, a man who wears many hats indeed. Nowadays, he's the host of uh, <laughs> three <laughs> quarters <laughs> podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm actually, he's been the main host yeah, since, I'm, I think, I'm, a few years down the line. Yeah. And he's also passionate about sports business. He's a lawyer by profession and now... Uh, venturing into sports consultants. How is it catching up, man? Uh, thank you very much, first. Uh, for, it's always a pleasure to grace uh, Churchline. Um, it's going well. Um, still very hard to convince the local investor to invest in local sports. But what gives me hope is the amount of attention we are getting from uh, foreigners. Uh, people who are in jurisdictions who have seen sports actually thrive as a business, and um, that that gives me hope, uh, and, and and that's why I continue doing it. Um, the Kenyan will catch up at some point, but um, it's very good to see what people outside Kenya are seeing of the Kenyan sporting scene, or people outside Africa are seeing of the African sporting scene. I don't even want to say Africa because North America has already sorry, North Africa has already privatized sports and commercialized sports. Um, Angola, that's happened. Tanzania, we are seeing it with Simba. South Africa are years ahead of everyone else. So it's a Kenyan thing. We just don't, our investors just don't see it. But look, they'll see it one day. One day they'll see it. I think sometime back on the same platform in this particular show, we were talking about Patrick Motsepe, the tycoon yes. from South Africa, now in now charge of president. CAF, yes. Confederation of African Football as the president. Yes. And you know, how he has maneuvered his way into you know sports business, yeah. having acquired his wealth through business, through mm -hmm. giving its overwhelming passion, mm -hmm. and even his club itself during participation in CAF Champions mm -hmm. League, must they take choppers and like what we see <laughs> in you know, East Africa? Uh, Patrick Motsepe actually made his money from gold because you know gold is a big thing in South Africa. Yes, that's how he made his money, but he's invested in sports because he owns uh, Mamelodi Sundowns. Yes, and he owns thirty-seven percent of the Blue Bulls. The team that plays from the rugby team that plays in Pretoria. So um, now that takes you to the next level. Yes, you can be a billionaire by South African standards because of gold, but maintaining a professional sports organization is ridiculous amounts of money. You have to have a bottomless pit in terms of cash. So that now takes you to the next level. Even in terms of billionaires' clubs, that now takes you to the next level. I mean, it's not every, there are very many billionaires, but it's not all. Well, billionaires who own sporting organizations. There are very few. Why? Because it's expensive. It's expensive to run a sporting organization professionally. Ken, I think what we're speaking is related to what happened last weekend on Sunday. We saw the protests, yeah. anti Glazers protests that led to postponement of Man United against Liverpool. You know, the owners, the Glazers family, have been, uh, you know, they are purely uh, because of business, you know, yeah. returns in terms of finances, but you know, fans want outcome. Yeah, they, they want outcomes from the pitch and from them who've been taking a lot of money from Man United. Uh, I think taking money to finance the loan they, they, they took from the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that angered the fans. But, but uh, aside from the Glazers, when, when you look at it from here, a uh, huge club like Gore, uh, the, I think uh, the, the Ambrose Rachier, when can he like say, okay, I'm going to make this team um, ha the 50 plus one thing, mm. when can he say that? Is it possible at the moment or still very far off? It's, it's, it's possible. Um, first of all, just to take you back to the Man United case. Um, the problem is, first, Glazers have been United since 2004. Yes. So they've been, they've been successful even with the Glazers on board. The issue came in, I think, uh, the, what was it called? Super League. The Super League. Yes, the Super League was a, was a big issue for their fans. But you know also, don't, not to get complex, but the, uh, when, when Glazers took over United, they did some, something called a leveraged buyout. So basically, they used United's assets to borrow money to buy United. <laughs> right? So United, I like that. Yes, yeah, so United have been running in debt all yeah. those years, despite being, them being uh, generating some ridiculous revenues over the few years. But anyway, back to your question in terms of Gormaya. Yeah. It's possible. Um, maybe three weeks ago, um, there's, an act, there's a piece in the nation called Kogalo Corner. Yes. And somebody had floated a question about, is it, isn't it time for us to privatize? Yeah. Because 
even the subs, you know, clubs in Kenya are basically member clubs. Yep. Member clubs. So even the subs that subscriptions you're supposed to be paying, 1,200, how many of the God fans can afford it? So you have a very big club. And, and actually the argument was even these community clubs that we keep saying community clubs, community clubs, community clubs. Yeah. We need to privatize. Yeah. There's a need to, if, if Gormaya today got 10 billion shillings to privatize, um, I can guarantee you, give it five years, they'll be competing against, uh, against the top, top boys in, in, in CAF Champions League. Because you need money to run a sporting organization. You can never run away from that fact. You can never run away from that fact. And I don't know why guys keep on saying, oh, you'll kill the culture. What culture? <laughs> Man United have been in existence for 100 years. I, in fact, I keep on saying the three clubs to me that have heavy culture in England is United, Arsenal, and Liverpool. And it's no mistake that the three clubs that have won most Premier League titles. Yes, true. And the culture still runs deep. Yeah. The money just comes to meet the operation. The culture will always be there. When you have guys like Sir Bobby Charlton seat still on your board, when you have um, at Anfield, they have um, a restaurant called the Legends Restaurant. And what Liverpool do is that every day there's a Liverpool legend. The likes of Kenny Dalglish. Kenny Dalglish yeah. and uh, what was um, Ian, Ian Rush. Ian Rush, yes. Uh, Michael Owen, who. Steven Steve Gerrard. All those guys, every day they make sure there's a, there's a, there's a legend yeah. who will come and sit down with the. With do you think that can be incorporated local as well? It can. It can. It's very simple. I'm just telling you, once the first dice rolls in terms of private investment, Kenya is a copycat economy. Sure. Yeah. So once the first dice rolls in terms of privatization, we are going to go that way because um, we are being left behind. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, <laughs> funny thing is, so none of the transactions I'm working on, uh, we were having a conversation with some guys who are based in South Africa. And he was telling me that your country is known for so many good things. Mm -hmm. uh, it's known for tech. You know, being a pioneer in technology in Africa, yeah. it's known for the people, it's known for the world class safaris. I can't wait for the time that it's going to be known for the sporting potential that it has. Look at it, uh, let's look at it like a, like a manufacturing, like the manufacturing industry. Let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's look at it like that. The raw material is already there in terms of the athletes. Kenyans are very athletic, and that raw athleticism. All you just need is a technical, uh, yeah. harnessing okay. the technical side of them. And in multiple sports, in football, in rugby, in athletics. So we've been poor at the execution. Yes, yeah. but but to harness the technical side, you need money. People can't, he, he, coaches can't be doing this as a side hassle. It has to be their main job. It has to be their main job to harness this talent. And yeah. that requires money. We've spoken over time how, you know, the government role mm -hmm. is to put in place a conducive environment, yes. an enabling environment for sporting activities to thrive mm -hmm. in the country. But what we've witnessed locally is most federations cry foul, mm -hmm. you know, sort of being beggars to the government whenever they get stranded. I don't know. Are we reversing the roles? If, if I was, today, let's say, for example, uh, the president wakes up and says, Maru is going to be the CS of sports. No, me, the first thing I do is ban funding federations. Because that is what creates the laziness amongst the leaders. And I think Kenya agree with that. Yeah. That's what creates the laziness amongst the leaders in the federations. Because, and that's what makes it very political. Because you know, okay, fine, Ministry of Sports is going to give me a 500 million shillings in a year. You see? So ban funding. So it is sort of a stepping stone for someone to make wealth. Exactly. <laughs> ban funding federations and tell the federations themselves and the delegates, Kazi Nienyu. It's your work now to choose leaders who are going to bring in money to your sport. My friend, let me tell you, you will see the change. And you just, you just limit it to now maybe Olympics, commonal, commonal yeah, yeah. maybe uh, make it for the World Cup or CAF or something like that. But year on year, ban funding federations. When uh, Malkia strikers, uh, maybe four years ago, they had been invited for a Grand Prix in, in Brazil. <laughs> and they were unable to go because first they owned they owed um, they called uh, the volleyball the, the global body FIFB yes yes they 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 owed those guys money I 
think it was about 8 million shillings because these guys had come to bail, out, bail them out a couple of times. Yeah. Then I see guys on Twitter, oh, oh I'm just now, Mohammed, now the CS of sports. How can the government let? And in my, question, in my mind, I'm like, why are you not taking the, why are you not taking the officials to task? Yes, why they should be accountable. They should be accountable. Some money has come through them. I've told you just now, Max Ofer, how I was being told when, uh, prior to, in the, in the first Richard Omola days and Mongi Mongi days, the maximum amount Kenya Rugby Union ever got from the Federation, uh, sorry, from government, was 5 million shillings. I remember at some point even the president himself attended the game. It was Kenya against England? No, we were, Kenya was playing England in the semi-finals of the 2013 yes. World Cup, um, Sevens World Cup. So he went to, he had just been elected. So he went to Impala and he found guys and he went to Impala to watch. Um, the, the big game, screens? The, the big screens yes. you know, with other guys. But that's my point is, it's just the management of sport in this country. We... I had in the, in the last session I had Ken talking about uh, Stadia. Uh -huh. We're talking about Stadia um, um, countrywide. Yeah. And the question I ask again is, in England, where have you ever heard that the government of England owns Stadia? <laughs> <laughs> it's the reversal of roles in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. So, should there uh, be a need for you know a policy being uh, same uh, level playing policy oh being yeah, put I mean, in place? See, and who is responsible to do you that? See, you see, policy is driven by the ministries. It's the driven. government. Yes, yes. yes. Policy is driven. Pro policy legislation is driven by the ministry. Right? So, if, again, I'm given that job, first thing I say is that I make it, I'm, I give tax rebates to private investors. If you buy a sporting club, if you buy a sporting organization, I'll give you some tax, re tax rebates of some form. Either I minimize the corporate tax, or I tell you you're going to be exempted from dividends. So, no, something just to spur you to get into that. Some exemptions, right? And then you also spur them to construct stadia, and especially the corporates. You know, Mercedes Benz Arena in Atlanta, G. Watt, Toyota Stadium in Houston. Yeah. You know, private companies, Etihad. Yeah. I know it's a naming I know it's a naming rights deal, right. but for Etihad to bring in that money just to manage the Etihad Stadium. You, know, you, you remember sometime back Safaricom, the leading mobile service provider, had to pull out of sponsorship of Kenyan football yes. because they partnered with the Football Ken Kenya Federation. Back then, someone who was in charge is Sam Nyamwea, and there is allegation that, you know, those people in charge of Federation, mm -hmm. it is had kitu kidogo in return. Mm -hmm. And then Safaricom said, come on, man, we want to invest in Kenyan football. Why? Mm -hmm. Yet you guys are seeking something in return. In return yeah. yeah, so... There has been this uh, uh, lack of corporate uh, confidence uh -huh. in investing in, in uh, Kenyan sporting activities. Uh -huh. But the other day, I saw uh, Ambassador Diamina Mohammed CS Sports during you know the partnership Kenya Commercial Bank signed with uh, WRC, uh -huh. where you know Joshua Igara was present, the CEO KCB, pumping a lot of resources towards yes. ensuring that it is a success. The uh, minister said that you know. They will put in place a conducive environment to attract corporates to invest in sports. Let me tell you, it's a, and I'm sorry to say this, it's nonsense. The policy is already there. Now I'll put on my other hat. Section 15.1Z of the Income Tax Act is very clear. Any person who uses their money to sponsor sports, that's an allowable deduction. That is a, ah. law, that was, that is a law that was brought in five years ago. In 2016. So from that point, the policy is already set. But you see, let me tell you what the problem is in Kenya. Most of these sporting organizations do not have the money to meet their operating costs. And I'll, gi I'll give a very uh, weird analogy. It's like this thing we hear of sponsors. You know, this is uh, again married men sponsoring young women. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I'm, good, I'm calling it sponsorship. So a sponsor just meets your budget. That's the role of a sponsor. That's the role of a sponsor. Even if they just meet your budget. How much is your budget? 200 million shillings. That's what we give you. A commercial partner, and even in real life, a partner, let's say you are married to somebody, you don't meet your budget. You're growing with this person. So you're going to grow together. You're going to invest in this person because you're going somewhere, right? Yep. That is the difference. It, when you have your own money, when you have your money to meet your day-to-day -day operations. Now I come and tell you, okay, fine. I think we can partner. You're not, you're not paying me as a sponsor. You're paying me as a commercial partner. 
you're bringing in your money to market yourself because you know that Ngaro's sporting organization has met the operational costs. We've marketed, we've brought in people to the stadium. We are an entity in itself. Sasa, nyin lete mi pesa enyo sasa mu advertise. Ken, it looks like Ngaro is being blatantly honest on this particular show, calling a spade. <laughs> a spade. Uh, yeah. with, 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 you know, the coming of various international events here marked to take place in the country. Even yesterday, yeah. the other day, two days ago, Amina Mohammed launched, you know, partnership between media and the organizers of IAAF World Under 20 Championship. Said to happen at Kasarani. You remember a junior event of that particular version happened three years down the line when Kasarani was being filled to the yeah. rafters. Kenya Magical Open just happened the other day where international golfers were invited to take part. WRC is happening. Do you think this policy is now, there is paramount in, uh, need for policies to guide Kenya ahead of this event? See if we have to harness you know what we required to do as a sports entity. Yeah, I think that, that that will always be there. I think the biggest problem comes with the people who are supposed to really push these policies, <laughs> aside from government. You know, people who are sitting at the top of, for example, FKF, uh, the cricket. Uh, many and I'm talking about the yeah. cricket. There was a yeah. caretaker committee put in place. Yeah. <laughs> you see people coming and going and still the same behaviors, you know. They, they don't really try even to help the other teams like to push money um for example fkf has been in charge of football for i don't know how many years they've signed another deal but uh i think whoever wins this uh they'll they'll get five million mm. uh, let's say god wins and they get five million you know uh, i think a month they run their club with something like 10 15 yes million. man ambrose no. rajiro was saying that yeah. a, a single match like go traveling to western to play against kakamega homeboys yeah. Uh, they might be required to, you know, spend over 200,000 shillings oh, yeah. Yeah, per yeah. game. Yet you earning 5 million for the whole season after winning a league. Ridiculous. Yeah, and they know about it and they just sit on the fence on it. But when the money is coming in, they, they, they quickly want to, to mix things up and get their cut and sort of do great PR by giving money. Mm -hmm. But we, we know what's happening behind the scenes. It's, it's, the Kenyan, it's a typical Kenyan mentality, even in politics. I want to keep you down so that you look at me like a god. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I'll be very honest, I'm somebody who has been in practice for a very long time. Somebody who's done numerous commercial transactions. I fail to understand how Ambrose Fachel has not seen yet the mm. need to, put, to commercialize or privatize gold market. With the pool that he has and the investors that he can be able to get, yeah. I'm finding it very shocking that this person... There's only one thing that can come to my head. I want to make you remain poor so that you keep on looking at me like a oh god. So it's you look uh, WRC. The only reason why WRC came to Kenya, of course, is uh, the story they give is of course um, topography. No, or no, the story they give for their pulling out is lack of government investment. Yes, but I've heard that was not the real story. I'll, I'll remember it on the next time uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> but anyway. Um, you see now the ca economy that's created in, mm. in Naivasha. Yeah. There's a lot of buzz going there. When you talk about the Kenya Open, current normally becomes another micro-economy just because of the Kenya Open, the hotels there and all that stuff. But you just have to... Private investment is where it's all at. Private individuals, wealthy individuals, have to put in their money first. Into, you see, if... Case in point, let's say... Let me use like the NFL. You know, at inception, I think people used to pay maybe a million, no, maybe $500,000 as a franchise fee, what they call a franchise fee, now to join. Now, Max, if you want to join the NFL, you're forking out $700 million. My goodness. Just to join. I can imagine the annual fees the Premier League clubs pay FA, but it's because they're privately owned and the wealthy guys can meet. So even FKA, or if we, if we privatized um, our football clubs, our rugby yeah. clubs, can you imagine, um, I know, let me use the one I know. I know like for rugby, the annual subscriptions for Kenya Cup team is 7,500 shillings. Come on, man. And there's no prize money for Kenya Cup competition, no right? Kenya... What's the essence of playing then, sweating? But guys... Is it passion why, why, alone? No, why am I bringing prize money if you guys haven't come? It's money. 
you so it's the responsibility of clubs also too. If you guys haven't commercialized your product, if you still want to run like amateur, why am I giving you prize money? If you still want to run like amateur, why am I giving you prize money? Simkai to know amateur na passion in. Sure. Yeah, why why am I giving you prize money? Why why am I giving you incentive? If you guys do not think outside the box. And uh, because companies want value for their money, it's yeah. symbiotic relationship, two way traffic. I give you money, I get value I in get return. Value for return. Why do you think you mean uh, until uh, maybe five years ago, mm. Premier League used to be called the uh, Barclays. Yes. Barclays yeah. Premier League. Yeah. And FA had to make the decision to stop calling it the Barclays Premier League because many of the sponsors are saying, Hey, we are putting in just enough as much money as much. So Barclays was monopolizing. It was monopoly. So it, they got now they just call it the Premier League. <laughs> I like that. The, the FA Premier League. But it's value for your money. It's value. Barclays are not giving it because oh they love football that much. No. Or you think at the Absa now when the when you just call the Barclays Kenya Open. They are putting in money because that they love golf. No, it's marketing. Mm. It's marketing. A friend of mine was telling me the other day that you know these companies never get tired of marketing themselves. No. They want to be in public domain for quite long. Like Safari, Com, Coca Cola, EBL, they are giant corporates. Yeah. But you see, you never stop watching them on TV giving the adverts. Hell no! I mean, marketing is everything. You, you, you pour money to convince the consumer to buy your product. So how you pour your money is on you. Yeah. If you want to partner with sporting organizations, by all means, go And even if possible, you get rid of, you know, the opponent's yes. product on market. You can buy them off. You know, I was shocked. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. Okay, in terms of this thing of sports business, no one touches the Americans. Like them, the, even the English. They don't get close to what the Americans are doing. The day I knew football's uh, impact was crazy is the day I saw Budweiser. An American here yes. advertising at the FIFA World Cup in Russia. Here is where I was like, hey, these guys have checked into to the football space. But it's because they realize. Remember, guys, as we when we as we were growing up, yeah. the beverage that was always associated with the FIFA World Cup was Coca-Cola. Yeah. Now you do you'd be hard pressed to see Coke signs during uh, the world at the last World Cup in Russia. It was bad bad ways up, bad ways up, bad ways up, bad ways up. And I was thinking of small things, I was looking at um if you look at, uh, if you watch F1, yes, the timer is run by Rolex, yeah, the the watch brand. If you look at uh, Premier League, the timer is run by Hublot, the watch brand. If you go to tennis, the timer is run by Tagore, the watch brand. Where am I going with this? Can you imagine getting to a point where you've built a very good profile? I'm seeing Encata, the 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 local brand that's being pushed a lot doing timing for Premier League mm -hmm. or doing timing for Kenya Cup. But for them to put in their money also, you guys have to fix your stuff. You have to put money in the game. You have to make it attractive. Me, if I was, if I was this federation now, I'd be lobbying government to pass those policies. Pass those policy, policies to make it attractive for the private investors. Because even as we speak, Sports Act was passed in 2013. It was a legislation that was enacted mm -hmm. in Parliament during you know the 11th Yes. Uh, uh, parliament, yes. but up to date, it hasn't been executed fully. No, um, but Sports Act is still. It's still wrong. It's still. Okay, it addresses the issue of um, at least now it gives uh, sporting organizations powers to borrow or to own assets. Can you imagine? Like, there's even intellectual property assets. Prior to the Sports Act, there's no club in this country that owned their own IP assets. But anyway, that, that brought it in. But. So it allowed the uh, sporting orga organizations to borrow, but they have to get authorization from the CS of sports. It's still a cake, if you ask me. Um, but like I'm saying, you know, like recently I was doing, I was doing a search. Um, there's a federation I wanted to, just to get to know who's behind it. And I write a letter to the Registrar of Sports. This is public information. If today I want to search on a company, Max. Yes, it's, it's supposed to be in public it's, domain. It's pa, pa, pa. I pay my 650 bob, I get my search immediately. The hell I'm getting from that. <laughs> just, to, just to show me these are the officials of it. The hell I am getting from that office. I'm like, come on, man. Get like, guys, let's see. Uh... But again, let me tell you, Max, let me be honest. Yes. Uh, when the money comes in, things are going to change. 
Yeah. When money, when private investment comes in, things because even now we'll go overboard in terms of drafting legislation, in terms of drafting codes, in terms of drafting constitutions for these organizations or for these federations. Yeah. Well, there's a, this, they'll, they'll, they'll need a bit of money to, to be poured in. I don't know if you're watching there's this F1 documentary, Drive to Survive. Yeah. And, and, and yep. you see the nitty gritties, I mean, the laws. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Sijui, you're not supposed to use this kind of tire. Sijui, you mimicked my production of the car last year. You know, but you need money, but... We need mm -hmm. to compile such a documentary locally. How yeah. possible? Money, even that one because money. A lot of information I in mean, the archives. Look at a, look at a, the last dance. The last dance. The Michael Jordan yes. documentary. Yeah. Hey, a lot of... 20 years of footage. Months. My goodness. Yeah, so so huge resources was invested yeah. in the kuna documentation. Kuna 20 years ago, wakasema, wajua nini? Watch to shoot. Let's shoot this thing, mm -hmm. then let's wait for it. Mm -hmm. In 20 years, it's going to be worth it. But then, Max, more importantly for me, not forgetting even about that last me, it's the team that went into producing that documentary. Yes. The brains off, behind. Of off a sports, of off a commercial sport yeah. in basketball. The team that went into producing that documentary, the editors, the producers, the executive producers, producers, the gaffers, the director, the whole team that went into producing that documentary. You know you're talking about close to 100 guys, eh? Yeah. So 100 guys have been given employment because of that one documentary. And the reason why Jordan is famous is because it was a commercial sport. No, it was good, no doubt, <laughs> but it was the business side. I mean, Nike, Nini, all those things. It's a business side. But again, even locally there is a lot to be documented. We have legends whose, you know, content is not yeah. in public domain. 1987 All Africa Games when Gore was winning the title, the likes of John Bobby or Gola, Alan Thigo, are yet yeah. to be documented. Even Dennis Oliech, give it like 10 years after today, the search will not giving much needed information of him, you know, during his uh, big stage football. Yeah, I think uh, nobody wants... I, I've never seen a documentary, a really proper one, on any legend of football or whatever sport. You know, you just see them when life has has taken their toll on them. You know, they the just beaten up. Or Dumbe cricket. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You just that's when they start receiving coverage. Whereas when they're having their proper careers and everything, ah, the Kenyans. They, but I can't really blame it on the Kenyan public. Yeah. I, I'd really have to blame it on the people who, you know, the the guys, the owners of the club. Mm. You know, I think uh, even if uh, the last dance, mm -hmm. I don't think it's just someone who came from outside. Maybe it's someone from the NBA or someone from oh, the yeah. Bulls who just pushed it. Yo, this guy can, can give us money uh, in future by shooting this. Actually, what they did is the current person who's the NBA commissioner, I like what you said. Yeah. The current person who's the NBA commissioner, Adam Silva, at that time was the head of entertainment, 20 mm. years. The enter you see, yeah, you see yeah, it's entertainment. entertainment. <laughs> they yes. have an entertainment division. So he was the head of entertainment. And then the Bulls owner, Jerry Reinsdorf, and the Bulls coach, uh, Phil Jackson, and Michael Jordan. So the three, so NBA approached the three oh. and told them, okay, guys, we see there's a potential here. Let's shoot this thing, we'll collect footage, and we'll pack it wherever it needs to be packed. But then we'll only use it if it needs to be used. And oh. Jordan is the only person who can sign off on it. My point goes to, to collecting that information, collecting that data, collecting oh. that raw footage, you only pesa it and a process. And then it's, it's, it's a journey. It's money that is required. So I think about um, Cape Verde versus Kenya in 2003. Yeah. When Oleju was scoring exactly. that when crucial goal to help them exactly. qualify. I was at the stadium when he scored that thunderous yes. uh, volley. Who has that footage? <laughs> <laughs> if we don't even have TV, rights, my friend. <laughs> if we don't have TV, rights, who has that footage? So Supersport was contributing immensely to the growth of KPL. Yeah. Because... To be realistic, if you go on the streets of Nairobi in the CBD and meet a Kenyan fan and ask them about, you know, football, they will tell you of Arsenal United mm -hmm. Champions League. Asking them about local uh, top tier, they, they are so clueless about it. That's mm -hmm. why at some point Nicolas Musonye, former Secretary General of SECAF, was complaining that Kenya Sudan is playing at Nair National Stadium. Then, just a stone throw away at Nairobi West, fans are, you know, crowded in a club catching up Arsenal against West Bromwich Albion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, multi-choice had really helped this this country. 
in every, I remember they, they even had a channel, Super Sport 9 East. Yes. It was there to, to show KPL games. And all of a sudden, ever since Super Sport left, it's always been hard to, to watch like all the league all the league games, you know. And even now they they ha they signed a deal but it's it's, it's very yes. dodgy yeah. because uh, I was checking out that channel. You know it's not a sports channel. Yes. There's music, music and things and then boom, when the game is on, they just show the game and then it's done. You know? It's yeah. just a dodgy. And deal. you know do you know the reason as to why Supersport left? Contractual disagreement. You know, mm -hmm. we signed a deal that, you know, we, we will uh, give broadcast uh, right. uh, rights yeah. to this league because it consists of 16 teams. Then suddenly, yeah. Yeah. you are extending the league to mm -hmm. 18 teams, you know? Mm -hmm. you know. You know, the guys who manage uh, sports eh, in this country, I even question their passion towards mm -hmm. the sport itself. But one thing is certain, they don't know about the business angle or the commercial angle yep. of you don't know the importance of having a broadcast partner you know you don't you don't know the importance of some of these small small things mm -hmm. that we're talking about you know that contract with super sport can you imagine the amount of data would have been able to collect yeah. and the amount of money would have been able to make off documentaries yes 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 about. uh the i don't know if it's in the premier league but american sports do it like so, so you have told me there's an NBA entertainment division. Yeah. Or rather, they all have entertainment divisions. Do you know they follow the team that is most likely to win? Or the teams that are most likely to win? They follow and collect content. Uh -huh. And immediately after the finals, they drop a documentary for the past, mm -hmm. for the past season, making mm -hmm. money off it. Those are the small, small things that we don't look at. But hey, Max, <laughs> look. Like I said, uh, the dice needs to be rolled. Um, the first person who's going to get into private investment in sport in Kenya is going to make a hell of money if he's a business person, but it's also going to change the sporting scene in Kenya. Only then can, uh, can, we, can we fix that problem Nicholas Msoni is talking about, that Kenya and Sudan is playing and people are in Nairobi West yes. watching. Uh, so their love for European football is so unwavering it surpasses their passion for Kenyan it's leagues. Easy. I mean... Which league has the most following? In <laughs> See, it's Premier EPL. Yep. See, it's because EPL put in money to market their league. So with your sports consultants, as we wind up, given an opportunity to uh, partner and collaborate with you know, local federations, mm -hmm. will, you, will you change the dwindling fortunes? Yeah, it's simple. Like I'm telling you, it's just one thing. Um, on the local federations and local clubs, it's an issue of creating the business model and making because i mean there's some money you're making clearly mm -hmm. whether it's ticket or the sponsors there's some money you're making yep. it's just to package the brand and, and and develop a business model that then makes it attractive for the private investor to invest for the federations is to lobby government it's for them to be lobbying government to put in policies to make it attractive for if the if of course if government can't think for themselves then it's for the federations to push government and tell them look let's put in policies that make it attractive for the investor to come in. But we have to, you know, you've seen, you've seen in the world of rugby, there are deals being made with private equity firms. Yes. Where they're coming in to buy in stake to run the commercial rights. We've been chatting in our rugby groups and people are like, oh, you sell the soul of the game. In my head, I'm like, first, what are you telling me about soul of the game? If England, who's the home of rugby, have done it, you, what, what, what soul do you have? You know, it, it, boils, down, it boils down to that thing for coaches, I always ask. Oh, we should appoint our own local coach. <laughs> if England, the home of rugby, has this, not appointed, there is there's another one mm -hmm. of you know, come on, man. In football, we need to have a former player to be in charge of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a former player. Mourinho, what did he play? What did Mourinho play? Yeah, coach. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> we are just anyway. We hope. So it's not about having played that sport before for you mm -hmm. to rise to the managerial no. level. You play. You being a good player and you being a good manager are two different <laughs> things. <laughs> Very different things. I think what Nara is saying, we can attribute it to what is happening at the National Olympic Committee of Kenya. Former international for Kenya Sevens, you know, Humphrey Kayange, is the athlete representative at the NOC. And he's been doing very well advocating for the, you know, welfare mm -hmm. interests of athletes, even at the international scene. Mm -hmm. But if we just had someone who played that sport without having you see, intellect. To, to, Toll's role has to have an athlete. Mm, yeah. Because how, how do you represent athletes if you've never been an athlete yourself? 
all right? Yes. So doll's role requires an athlete. But if you tell me about President of NOC, you know, I remember when the uh, campaign was happening and uh, Paul Target, the main, um, main thing on his CV is he's represented Kenya. And I remember asking <laughs> that, that should not be his main, his main thing. If I were him, I'd be saying the discipline I've acquired having served in reputation, the, uh, reputation the integrity. Uh, yes, I've served in the, um, he was not. Uh, army? He was in the army, yes. yes. Having served in the army, having a... Um, he's still one. Yes. Having, he's a general. Ha- having um ex- been exposed out there. Five-time world exactly, uh, working cross-country with, winner. W- working with professionals. Now, that is a professionalism I'm going to bring to running knock. But now, guys say, oh, he's a home of Who cares? I mean, like, I'm, going to, I'm being very honest. Mm-hmm. If, if one of the greatest coaches today in the game, in Jose Mourinho, did mm-hmm. not play, if the greatest coach, to my thinking, in England was not a stellar player in Alex Ferguson uh, for United, Arsene Wenger, did not, he was playing Division 4 football <laughs> and to take a whole team and beat him. Okay. You know, we, we we have to we have to we have to we have to uh, like, like I'm saying, you being a good player does not mean you're going to be a good manager. Does not mean you're going to be a good official. If that was the case, Kenya to get one belly Sam. Can you have last question for this uh, man before uh, he leaves the I, I, s- the session because uh, he's yeah. being too over sincere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think you said that uh, registration for Kenya Cup is seven thousand five hundred. Uh, your affiliate fees. Your oh, affiliate fees. Yeah. yeah. For participating in the league. Yeah. So you know, we, yeah. I think that's crazy because last time I checked mm-hmm. to to join the sub county league, the lowest division of football yeah. is twelve thousand. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you see, foot, football. Football is, uh, is is first. It's massive. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Listen, you have sub county leagues. In, 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 in rugby, you only have three levels. You have Kenya Cup, you have Nationwide, and you have Championship. Um, and the, 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 a rugby club's budget, just to logistics, yeah. is maybe 25 million, 20 to 25 million shillings a year. Oh. Um, but still, can you imagine if you privatized even, let's say, just six? Mm. The, the ones I see that are ripe, of course, is Queens, Impala, Nondis, Mwamba. Nakuru. Yeah. Even just six is privatized there. You know, even your affiliate fees shoot up. Yeah, yeah. From seven to seven hundred K. If those yeah. five pay seven hundred K, that's three point five million for the union mm. in revenues. Yeah. That's just off six. Yeah. So it's, wow. It's been a fantastic discussion. Really? We need to create this online really? to be talking about sports business, policies, yeah, you know, yeah. marketing aspect oh, of yeah. the game. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. It's, it's a must. Um the time is here. Yeah. Uh, and you know the funny thing is, um, in the conversations I've been having since we started this consultancy, people outside Africa have seen, and people outside Kenya, especially, have already seen the potential in Kenya. There is massive potential. Sisi tunalalia maskio, them they'll come, they'll make their money. It's a discussion we will delve into comprehensively at some time later on. But of course, it's been quite a fantastic discussion having Aro Kamuya, sports consultant, just talking about the sports policies in the country and what we can do going forward to ensure that sports thrive and we stop being beggars and <laughs> all the times crying foul just appealing to the government to come to our rescue whenever we stranded especially when it's almost an international event like it is right now ahead of the olympic site for tokyo japan of course we will continue talking about this to ensure that you know we educate the federations for them to know the need of you know uh, making it a business model to generate revenue on their own and make their activity self-sustaining, isn't it, Ken? Yeah, definitely. Much. Of course, touchline is the show. We still on until three o'clock. Don't go away. Stay tuned.